One we've already talked about. You must become masterful at understanding and harnessing the power of marketing. It's too big of a subject to get any deeper than I introduced here. We'll do a whole module on it. The second is the ability to sell. And sell sounds like a manipulative concept. It really isn't. It really is nothing more than the passionate ability to advocate, to champion, to uh, represent a concept, a solution to a problem, a way of achieving an opportunity or desired outcome with such compelling certainty and such trustworthiness that the prospective market you are selling to totally and absolutely embraces and accepts what you're saying and they trust you enough to take action. So you have to become masterful at marketing. You have to understand selling. Ironically, within these two categories, marketing and selling, there is a bridge that you have to uh, not even master because it's a natural uh, element within the human being, but most people in certain cultures don't really understand it, and it's trust building. There are 13 characteristics to trust building, and I will share with you all of them again. I'm not trying to tease you, but they're too important to just give you a little bit. I'll go through every one of them, and we will do them in a way that truly and and uh, clearly shows you how to possess the absolute most powerful level of trust with everyone you deal with. Now, why would you want that? I'll tell you why. A very good friend of mine who was a partner with Stephen R. Covey who wrote The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and who is still a partner with Stephen M. R. Covey who together they wrote two books about trust building did research. And what they found was that individuals and companies that enjoyed maximum trust with their marketplace, with their um, team, with their vendors, with their community, performed 300% higher, more profitably, more uh, predictably than people who didn't. So, first of all, knowing how and, and living in what we call a maximum trust, sort of an environment where your mind, your heart, your soul, your communications convey and establish maximum trust at all times is vital for maximum success. It also is very liberating because it's a wonderful way to connect with people. And in many cultures, it's great advantage giving because cultures tend to be very private and very withheld. And the more trust you can create with your prospective marketplace, buyers, with the people you're working with, either your team members, your employees, your partners, your your skill providers, with your vendors, the faster they will they will work for you, the more they will do for you, the more the faster people will buy from you, the more loyal they'll be to you, the more they'll come back and repurchase, the better vendors will be with you, the more liberal they'll be in giving you flexible terms. Trust building is very essential. So, marketing, selling, trust building. Now you have to be great at lead generating and conversion. What does that mean? It means knowing how to go and target the best market sources which represent the highest probability of buyers for you, knowing once you've identified that source, and why would you want to do that, by the way? 
because why would you want to go to a bad source of low probability buyers if there's a source of high probability buyers? So you want to, first of all, learn how to target the best sources. And because they could be anywhere, it could be a list, it could be a magazine, it could be uh, an organization, it could be a category online, it could be a, a community, an uh, online community, it could be a specialized buyers. Once you learn how to identify the source, then you've got to learn the best way to target them and to generate the prospective lead. What does that mean? It means the ability to get the right targeted audience to want to start a meaningful relationship with you. And a meaningful relationship is a general word because it'll mean different things to different people. For some people, it will mean just starting to receive their educational material because you have an intangible product or service that takes a long time to sell. For some people, a meaningful relationship will mean buying the first time or coming to your store the first time or coming to your booth at a trade show. For some people, it'll mean getting people to read your blog or listen to your podcast. For different people, it'll mean different things. But the first step is knowing where the best source is. The second step is knowing how to access, how to reach that source in a way where they will want to respond and start a meaningful relationship. The next step, depending on your definition of a meaningful relationship, and I'm sorry that I can't give you one definition because depending on the business you're in, the product or service, the market you are sourcing and targeting, it's a different, it's a different meaning to different people. Then you've got to become masterful at converting, at moving that person from a meaningful starting relationship to a meaningful buying relationship. And each of these have different elements. None of them are as hard as they sound. All of them take understanding and explanation and education, and each of them really could deserve a full module. I'm not going to do deep on any of them today, but I promise that we're going to create either full modules or sub-modules on each one so that you're not confused, so you have enormously greater understanding and powerful control of all of these so you have the ability to choose and select and incorporate what is appropriate for you. But just right now, I have to understand, you got to be a great marketer. And a great marketer doesn't mean art, it's science, so you can understand it. There are, there's con ways to construct it, engineer it, there are proven ways, and if you do it reasonably well, you will be very, very successful. You've got to become a masterful sales at sales and, and uh, trust building, and that's not manipulative, so don't be at all intimidated or concerned. You've got to be masterful at targeting the right source, at, at moving that source to want to take action, to have a meaningful relationship. You've got to become masterful at turning the first level of meaningful relationship into meaningful purchase. And then you've got to become masterful at knowing how to sustain and continue that purchasing relationship so that the investment you have made in targeting them, in moving them to a starting relationship, pays dividends and profits over and over and over again to you for an enormous period of time. You do that by understanding the power and the driving principles of marketing, which I will share in a module, of trust building, which I will share in a module, of qualitative advisory consultative selling, which I will share in a module, of targeting source, of stimulating and motivating the right most probable source 
to want to have a meaningful starting relationship, of moving them to an ongoing relationship, and then you've got to learn the art of what is called upselling and downselling. What does that mean? It means that all buyers are not the same and all buyers' needs, requirements, and desires are not the same. So if you treat them all the same, you are doing them a disservice and you are doing yourself a disservice. Why? Because some people are going to want more. More quality, more quantity, more combinations. Some are going to want more but can't afford more, so they're going to want to start with less. You have to understand that there are different stratas, up and down the buying process that you have to make available because different people are at different points of progression, of desire, or of ability. And ability can mean the financial ability to pay or the consumption ability to consume. I may not be ready for a full course on change management, but I may be ready for a book and a video that gives me the foundation and the fundamentals. So different people are at different places, so you have to know how to sell more things to the people that are ready for a lot more, how to sell less things to the people that would love to buy your major primary offer but either can't afford it or or don't have the time or yet the motivation to to do it. And by the way, there's, I, I think there's four, there might be five as I list them, categories of markets that you have to understand. That's why you have to source the best market, not the worst market. One market is people who are unaware of what you've got or of you as a company or you as a service provider and uninterested. The other would be people who become aware but are still uninterested. The other ones are people who become aware and are interested but aren't ready to buy. The others are people who are interested and ready to buy but need you to provide the bridge to purchase and repurchase. And I'm just trying to give you these wonderful power principles that you have the ability to command. The next thing you have to become masterful at is both repurposing and referrals. They're different. Referrals mean if you're in a business, you start a business, you buy a business, you you buy into a business, and that business sells products or services that many people should be and would be comfortable telling other people in their lives or in their businesses or in their families or in their churches to buy from you, You have to be masterful at knowing how to get them to do that. Why? Because a referral-generated buyer buys fast, negotiates little, buys more things, buys more often, is more enjoyable to work with, is more profitable, and costs you nothing to acquire. A marketing-generated client will cost you money to acquire. A sales-generated client will cost you money for a commission or a salaried salesperson, or to go to a trade show. A referral-generated client will cost you nothing, and the more you understand referral marketing, which is an entire module, because there's 93 ways you can do it, and I will teach it to you, the more powerful you will be. Repurposing means what else can you do ethically with either the buyer, after you've sold them everything you have to sell them, or the prospect who didn't buy from you. It can be complementary products or services. It can be additional products or services. It can be literally competitive products or services, but you have to know how to repurpose. Why? Because you might make more money on repurposing than you even make on selling your basic product or service. You might make money from people who don't buy from you, but you can introduce them to alternative products or services that fill the same need. These are the basic drivers. The key point to this module is about power. It's about giving yourself the power 
to understand the game of business that's being played in a way that's much more knowledgeable, much more certainty-based, much more powerful, much more success-probable than your competitors. In the next module, we'll start taking you deeper, but you have to understand these elements first so that you can be mentally prepared to be maximum successful in whatever your first step in business is and maximum strategic in wherever you want that first step to ultimately take you. I hope you've enjoyed this. It was not intended to confuse you. It was intended to liberate you and get you excited. So thank you. I look forward to the next module we share together. This is a wonderful journey we're having, and uh, we've only just begun. Trust me, by the time we're done, you will know what you should be doing, how you should be doing it, where you should be doing it, why you should be doing it, and where whatever you decide to do can take you long term. And you will be in control, and you will have the power, and you will make decisions that are highly success probable, not failure probable. Thank you.